Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. If you're new to this channel, this is a community of learning that I'm looking to build, highlighting tools that are usually free, but are of great benefit to artists alike and can give us the tools and experience. And together I'm looking to cultivate all of our perspectives and views to make a solid learning environment. Tonight, I wanna to look at typography in GIMP and Krita, do some comparison, see which tool shakes out to have stronger features. Maybe some over there, maybe some over there. We'll check it out either way. Let's get to it. Okay, so first one I wanted to look at is actually GIMP. And I have to say that GIMP actually has done some good work here, making the typing tools easy to figure out and also very versatile. A mark of a good text tool within a graphic program is maintaining the vector attributes, keeping it as something that can be modified and updated and re-updated without having to worry about the layer rasterizing and then you have to retype it all out again or, or make large adjustments. That's one of my main complaints, I think, if I had to pick one about paint.net in that once you type text in it, it becomes rasterized because it gets compressed into a bitmap and you have to start over if you wanted to modify that text. However, looking at GIMP, I want to give a demonstration here of how this works, talk about it, show off uh, some of its stronger points, and we'll compare that with Krita. So over here we have GIMP. Looking at the text tool, this was actually really, really intuitive to get started. You click, you type stuff. <laughs> and I really felt like this interface was very well designed. The controls are all right in front of me. It's very easy to interject back where I was working on, change things, make edits. Um, the font changer could be a little clearer it's a little tough to get a sense of what the font's going to be when you're working on that but otherwise this makes good sense the way this is built and better yet if i start working on other things if i go into the background and attempt to do some work out there and then come back to this layer flip back to the font tool it will let me interject back in where I was and resume, which that means it's maintaining that vector. It's, it's very well designed and I like how versatile that is. Another small drawback I'll just mention is that moving it, it seems to be very picky about where you grab the layer. It has to be an actual filled, it has to be a filled pixel for you to grab for it and move it. If I grab somewhere else within, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So. You have to be right on top of the letters and then click and grab it and then it lets you move it. That could be a little better, but otherwise I think that's a very solid design, very useful design, and also just very efficient if I need to change my mind a lot or if I'm just trying to kind of proof of concept through something, this is a great way to do that. Um, so I was very impressed with that in GIMP. Contrasting that with Krita, again the tool is not bad, but it just um, it lacks some of that refinement, actually, that I found in GIMP. Um, let's pull that up and take a look at that. So text, first of all, this is a little annoying where you have to start by selecting a space. I think that's kind of dumb because you should just pick a point to begin and type. If you're really going to be, again, flushing out your words as you go, I don't like that it makes you do that. It doesn't really stick to those bounds, but it's just kind of a why does it work that way type of question. This editor, while it does work, it feels like an afterthought. And maybe that's not the case, but just the way this is designed, when I do typing into here and work on it, I have to click save before it'll actually push out to the layer. And that's, it's not a real time update. It's a little bit tedious and painful if you're doing a lot of different testing and trial and error. Uh, changing colors and doing that. Um, I just found that to be a little irritating. Again, it'll do the job and it does it fairly well. It could be more efficient. It, it, it lacks some of those features that I mentioned up in GIMP, which, which were really easy to take off and run away with. Um, the font previewer here is a lot better, I'll say, than GIMP. 
in that you get a really good idea of what you're going to get and that I do appreciate I wish that was kind of molded into GIMP and then GIMP would be a near perfect <laughs> near perfect experience there uh, the moving aspect aside um, so that's done very well again same as GIMP it maintains the vector layer so you can work on other stuff come back to the vector and retap into that layer and, and get busy again and do stuff so on and so forth moving actually works a lot cleaner I mentioned that I wish that grab was a little less picky in GIMP this is what I mean is that I can grab really anywhere in this layer and change it up and um, that's just it leaves a lot of room for for error and it threw me a couple times in GIMP when I tried to grab it and I was trying to figure out if I was doing something wrong by trying to click on it and move it and nothing was happening in some cases it would glad, grab the background behind it and that that again that GIMP you're so close <laughs> just a couple of small points there and that that really could be the, the be-all end-all in my eyes for working with text and getting things done graphically that was just I was really impressed by that. So again, not to say that these both these tools are without their uses. I do think they work very effectively. If you work better in GIMP, if you know that interface, use GIMP. If you work better in Krita, use Krita. There's some great strengths in both of those, and both seem to produce really solid results, keeping those vector layers, keeping it so that you can ratchet through your ideas and arrive at the font you want without a lot of extra overhead getting it done there. So. That's typography, working at GIMP, looking at Krita. I hope that was helpful and informative and gives you some ideas about how you can leverage these free tools. If I haven't mentioned that, these are open source, free. You can go download them. You can use them to your heart's content, and you can enhance them somewhat with other uh, development efforts that are going on. I strongly suggest that you go check them out. Download them both and see what's going to work for you. I do find a lot of pros and cons with each program, and it's well worth finding a, a comfortable workspace that you can dig into and work on from, from what works for you. Uh, again, this is Photo Learningism. Please come connect with me on YouTube. Please click the thumbs up and subscribe and follow for more great content. Leave comments below for what you'd like to see in other videos and discussions you'd like to have, other tools you'd like to see. I would very much like to hear back from you and hear if this was helpful. Come back, check in often, and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care.